Hi friends, how are you? Vladimir here with you. And this is the first weekly review for September 2012. Well, previous week was interesting, especially Thursday and Friday with Bernanke's speech, which ended again with nothing. Bernanke, as Bernanke on the last period, says the Fed is ready to act, but there is no reason to do it yet. Well, he discussed about all the numbers and everything. I'm not going to repeat that. But the idea is that the economy, on uh, some <laughs> specters, uh, is doing better. And this week we are going to have non-farm payrolls, which is the main uh, parameter probably for Bernanke to decide. Is there a need for QE number 3 or not? Previous time uh, non-farm payrolls was released, which was the first Friday on August, uh, we, got, we, we saw that there is some improvement. I told you then, I don't buy it because right now, right, the summer with uh, the U.S. Open and many other events, this is the the biggest tourism for uh, period for the U.S. and there are many, many, many uh, partial jobs, and that could be confusing and not the real numbers. Uh, that's not the real numbers on the job market in US and that's why I say it's very important to see an improvement if there is any for like three four months and that's probably what Bernanke is waiting for with saying nothing the market still reacted well we can call it bullish it did not change too much but we still can call it bullish I do want you to pay attention for that that's all the events the important events that we, we, we will have uh, on September, right until September 14, which is the then the European meeting, the European Central Bank meetings, uh, and there will they will probably will decide about the uh, bonds purchases, uh, and Mario Draghi will announce his program to help the U.S. the uh, European economy. Sorry, and you can pay attention that almost every day. Right? Almost every day is something important that could affect the market any uh, day. Uh, I do want to pay attention also before I go to the charts that this week is going to be well, a short week of mm, clear days for trading. Pay attention that on Monday there is a US bank holiday, also Canada. Uh, then we have a few very important days like uh, Tuesday with the cash rate in uh, Australia then we have GDP in Australia and we have the overnight rate in Canada on Wednesday and Thursday we have the European bid rate which expected to uh, to be cut and you can see that right, the expectations are talking about 05, 050 and half percent instead of 075. Not just that, Draghi will hold, uh, of course, the press conference, and before that, we will get the official bank rate from England. Then on Friday, the non farm payrolls. You can see it here the non farm payrolls, uh, and well, that's what we want to see. That's what will probably will decide for future for Bernanke. Uh, uh, will he go with Q number three or not? Now back to the charts. As I said, with saying nothing, the market still holds kind of a bullish environment, and many many uh, speculations were there just before Bernanke's speech. If he will say, if he will not announce Q number three, the market will crash. Blah 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 blah. blah. And if he will announce, the market will fly. Nothing happened on both sides. Nothing happened with Bernanke, nothing happened with the markets. And that's that means that they are waiting probably for something bigger. And let, let's go over the chart and see the opportunities we have. And I think that we still have some bullish environment. I do want to start with the Euro dollar. As the Euro dollar, as I said not once, once it will place itself above this 124.30, it should push a little bit higher. Well, it did push higher. During Friday, it reached even 126.30, which is this uh, very strong, as you can see here, very stiff resistance. And it now creates kind of flag here, a bullish flag. This level could be broken. And a break above this level 
could and should technically take the euro dollar a little bit higher the levels I'm looking for and I think the euro dollar still has the ability to go there uh, are about uh, above 127 I do think the euro dollar should push above 127 and then maybe try to reach the 200 moving average pay attention that this trend line was never tested yet as you can see and more than that that was the weekly chart and more than that the daily chart sorry on the weekly chart there is another trend line as you can see here right it also was never tested I'm a little bit doubtful that the euro dollar has the ability to go straight there it's around 130 but uh, the first line is very possible I will say more that we have to pay attention for the next Right, the next period. This period is bullish, and that's why I see. I think that the euro still has the ability to do that to reach higher. But for future, uh, well, that's a very bad sign for the euro dollar because uh, all the every push up from here will go and create for us, as we can see here, a bearish sheet in divergence, or from the current area which I'm talking about above 127 or the 200 moving average or even if the euro dollar will somehow gain the bullish momentum and that could could happen on the middle of September with the European Central Bank meeting then it could push all the way to 130 even but then we can see a huge bearish trend line and bearish hidden divergence is waiting for us and not just that we can also that's the weekly chart we can also uh, see the first signs for the euro dollar to go and create for us the continuing divergence which will be combined perfect with the weekly bearish hidden divergence and which will represent the next bearish strong wave so I am bullish for the euro dollar especially if it will uh, manage to place itself above this flag and as I said, above 127, we can see, well, every 50 points actually is a resistance here. But the 200 moving average should be uh, the target. And this line, I can see, uh, meets the prices exactly there. So I'm, I still, I am still bullish once it reaches this trend line uh, and the 200 moving average. Well, somewhere around. It doesn't mean it's going to touch it on the pip. It could be around right and around means 127 and above but there is also a potential bearish scenario and that will happen in case that we will get a stop right now and the euro retraces down and will break below this uh, channel or whatever it, it, whatever pattern it is if it will place itself again below the 124.30 uh, that would be a very 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 bearish sign very bearish sign so in other words as long as the euro dollar holds above the 124 30 I keep a bullish expectation and you can go and enjoy this right I told you how with the break above the flag um, or look for the down move in case that uh, this channel or triangle or whatever pattern you want to call it will be broken down the same the same idea is with the pound dollar the pound dollar is on very very bearish um, combination I would say weekly chart has weakness we can see that because the the pound dollar is one of the only pairs that is moving on such big and long period uh, sideway move right it's flat clear flat and on the daily chart we can sense the weakness here with the MACD despite of the uh, well the extremely bullish environment on Friday the slope is still bearish and very, very the, the pair is very weak that's why I think the pound dollar is going to reach its edge and maybe after the break here that was the the sideway and that was the break maybe after the break we can gain the fifth move because that was the last move inside the channel one two three four maybe now it's creating a five but with the current divergence we have to be careful it could stop on any moment and I give the pound dollar maximum 161 to, ri to rise before 
it begins to make the next strong down move and I do expect the pound dollar go all the way back to this trend line which means we have a room to go and if we um, well if we close that inside the channel this level could be also this 160 maybe will be a little bit longer for 160 plus 161 and then we'll make all the way down again which means we could enjoy from like something between 300 to 500 points down move for the pound dollar once this divergence is completed how do we know it's completed well it reached uh, one of the resistances mentioned 160 or uh, 161 somewhere in between is also okay and uh, MACD turns bearish again and some candle bearish candle pattern which gives the okay to go that's the sign the pound dollar begins the move uh, the style for trading recommended here of course will be the investor's style now two very 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 interesting pairs uh, I'm watching and I started the attack there as well Euro Aussie and Aussie Frank we were talking about the up move that is going to happen and the up move happens right now we can see that right after this down move that was the resistance number one the important one right uh, this uh, range here was uh, resistance number two and the current area is resistance number three even if we do if we don't treat this range as a resistance number two and we treat this one only then the next important level we have is here and this le this level is around 124 this 124 meets us also on the trend line and the 200 moving average plus pay attention what do we have we have extremely strong bearish hidden divergence for this pair RSI is about to reach the 80 in case the price is pushed for 124 or somewhere around and we have to pay attention that in case it makes the push a continuing divergence is going to be created on this part as well that's extremely strong bearish sign that's why I am <laughs> extremely sure that the pair is just about to make huge correction the first target of course will be the daily 20 MA I will say more than that if you have if you go for the four hour chart there is um, well I always say there is a, 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 some rule for divergences divergence when, when there is a beginning of divergence and the prices keep going when the retrace comes it will reach the level that was not ever tested after the break I will explain myself that was the last two highs in this case that was the divergence right that's where it was created as you can see let's measure that correct okay sorry here right that's the double top we have here it means that the peer created here some weakness sign already after the break above this area right after the break above this area right up it, the price has never tested that never that's why I think this level will be retested I will say more than that there is a trend line right here that's the trend line or if you want from this low it doesn't doesn't really matter the, uh, the angle a little bit uh, deeper here but the idea is the same the prices could go a little bit higher they could push to the 124 desired 124 but pay attention for this extreme divergence on the four hour chart every up move from here is only to make the, the crash then stronger based on this based on the four hour chart the meeting of the support and the trend line should happen somewhere during the uh, during this week right? somewhere during this week uh, it uh, could take us to the fifth or the sixth the seventh uh, of September but in case it pushed a little bit forward then it could meet us also on the break of the line and the resistance somewhere later on September right so Euro Aussie from my point of view is a pair to be there and every up move would be considered as a wonderful uh, sell with 20 as the first target of course a second target could stay open because that might be the beginning of something deeper right? of something deeper all right, that's about the Euro Aussie. And I said there's not another one which is the Aussie franc, and exactly the opposite of the Euro Aussie. You can see same story. 
RSI could go and push for 20 which is extreme on the low right and here we go I told you for more than a month the pair will make this down move and the pair makes this down move so again and again and again right uh, the, the words are the same when there is when divergence appears it's only question of time while you get the cycle if you measure the Fibonacci on the last move you can see that the price is right now on the 50 so they could push it a bit lower for something like 097 right something around the 200 moving average and the next important support and there is of course another trend line right here on the meeting but we can see that this bottom is the end for this pair as for now there is a wonderfully strong bullish hidden divergence and this down move could create a continuing divergence on the last part which means the pair is getting ready for up move for like 200 or 300 or even more points up to the 20 uh, to the, the 20 ma of the daily chart comparing with the four hour charts we can see that it's almost one to one as the euro Aussie, right extremely strong bullish divergence that's only question of time until this pair makes the correction considering the swap the positive swap uh, of buying the Aussie against both pairs could provide a wonderful opportunity what do we have to pay attention to Australian cash rate that's going to be on Tuesday and the expectation are for a 350 I think that uh, they could surprise and cut the rate which could of course um, reduce right the cut the Australian dollar strength price which could cause the last push for the Aussie um, weakness against these pairs Euro Aussie and the Aussie franc but with the current divergence and the current bottom is created and the positive swap we gain for the uh, for these pairs it just makes it very very um, logical and correct to jump in and hold these trades can go here for longer run attack the investor style or regular style with candle patterns or just by levels and I think it's it, it will be clever here to set stop loss far away like six seven or even more hundred points uh, from one side it's big amount from other side when such bottom is created you don't want to uh, to choke the pair right you you want to give it uh, the air you want to give it a chance to work and that's why I say if you want to protect yourself it, you welcome just make it far away um, exactly as it happened here right when we started the divergence was somewhere around this area and I said even if it pushed higher don't protect like 100 points give it a chance once it happens you will get the move and the move happened so that's about uh, these pairs and of course the pound also just in a few words join the same we have clear bend to bend move and a, almost a duplication pay attention for the pound OZ. Uh, we have a clear resistance here we have one little bit higher and the final one is here around 156.70 the pair also is going to create extreme and last time the extreme was reached with a divergence right it happened here that was the extreme the last time with a divergence and then I don't say that was going to happen but I think we are going for a bearish period for the uh, the OZ uh, crosses all right um, the next very interesting thing I have and the last uh, one is the gold gold uh, as I mentioned in the club gold while Bernanke is talking right gold tends to go higher I keep my bullish opinion for gold I do recommend to pay attention for this bearish Gartley we can see on the chart I don't think you have to attack a level I think give the gold a chance to work I think it should reach the 1710 or even higher 1730 hmm? but it will with uh, this the current here uh, the current overboat it will stop somewhere during the next period 
next days or the next weeks. It's going to make a stop and then we'll build a divergence here, build an extreme of the RSI and we'll begin its retrace. And I do think that the day that the gold will retest this line is not so far. So keep the bullish holding for the uh, gold, but pay attention for 1710, 1730, and 1750, which is the ex latest extreme area. Pay attention for those levels. We are going to have a bearish move right from there. Right? That's the pin. And the same, of course, with the silver, which is making a clear up move. RSI is about to reach the extreme. And we should pay attention for this trend line, which never was tested. Never, right, after this break. So, the higher we go, the bigger the retrace will be expected right after that. Let it go and pay attention for 33, 34, maybe even a little bit earlier here, sorry, uh, 32, uh, 20, 32, 30, I'm doubtful. I think 33 and 34 will be the important level to watch. And that's uh, the main, the most recommended pairs for the upcoming week, including two wonderful uh, commodities, the gold and the silver. Um, as, as, as for now, that's all. I, I, I'm pretty sure that during the beginning of the week, we will get, uh, well, much more uh, opportunities because the market will find a place. Do not forget that on Monday, again, the U.S. market is closed and the volatility expected to be low. And on Friday, that's NFP, a day that we don't want to trade right before uh, the NFP. If you do want to find some opportunities only after the news released. That's all, friends. Thank you very much for watching this video. I wish you wonderful first week of, this, of September. I'll see you on the club. Yours, Vladimir.